Unless you've been living under a rock, you've probably been overwhelmed, to say the least, with some of the big tech announcements that have come out. I mean, today alone, OpenAI just announced a new GPT model that is faster than ever before. Well, can you take a guess at what that might be doing based on what I'm showing you here? From what I can see, it looks like you're in some kind of recording or production setup. With those lights, tripods, and possibly a mic, it seems like you might be gearing up to shoot a video. Now, going into this week, we have a lot of updates that are going to be coming from Google's conference, yet to be determined as to what those are. But the point is, we are in a week going to have tech move and change at such a quick pace. It just feels like you can never keep up. A lot of us are continuously learning and improving our skills too, whether it's for the promotion, whether it's you're running your own business, whatever the case may be. We all have one common goal, which is we want to keep up to date with tech and lately it's kind of felt, well, impossible. And here's a newsflash for you. It's because it kind of is. That doesn't mean that we shouldn't try. What it does mean is we need to identify areas to put our focus into where we should be learning. Now, it brings up another question. Where do we know? How do we know where to put our learnings? It seems like there's so much to learn nowadays. Is it AI? Is AI going to fail? Not fail, but is it going to become less in demand? Should I do blockchain? Should I do a different technology? I mean, how do you know? If this sounds like you, I really want to reassure you, you aren't alone. I just basically <laughs> shared what my brain goes to all the time on a daily basis as I see all these updates. I mean, especially as someone who is a tech content creator as well, I'm always trying to stay up to date with what is coming up in tech and lately it feels really difficult. In this video, I am going to share with you two different key aspects, one being how do I identify tech trends that are worth keeping up to date with? How do you identify what you should be putting your learnings to? Whether it be learning a new technology, uh, reading more or doing research more on one specific thing, or do you just kind of let the trend pass? There are certain signs that you will be able to identify after watching this video as to what to look for, whether tech is a technology that's really trending is going to stay or if it's just going to be a fad. All right, let's dive into it. Now, before we dive into exactly what tips to use to learn these technologies or identify what will remain, we also need to look back at what went wrong previous times. Now for this, I want to use the example of cryptocurrency. And with the little sub caption though, that cryptocurrency is very much still a very prominent technology with blockchain, of course. Blockchain itself is used in so many different industries, but I want to use this as an example because that had so many signs from when it peaked and we were all learning blockchain Chain. we were all building smart contracts to now, even though it's still very in demand, there's way less demand than there used to be. I think there's some funny memes about this uh, on the internet. I'll try and find them and insert them here, but it was really those things. When cryptocurrency started really trending in the tech world, everyone wanted to learn about blockchain. I remember I wanted to become a blockchain developer at the time and thought, oh, I'm gonna switch my whole career. This is the way to go. We need to stay ahead, get hired while it's hot, make that money. You know, please tell me I'm not alone on this. Then fast forward. Now, although it's in demand, it's not nearly like that. Now we have AI and AI has been trending for the past, what is it, two years now? Really, really since the launch of chat. When did ChatGPT launch? Okay, just figured it out, 2022. So yeah, two years ago, wow. A good tip. Two years ago, or two and a half years ago at this point, at that time, then we saw this next big bubble happen where it was everyone wanted to get into AI. Everyone wanted to become an AI or machine learning engineer. And rightfully so. When you see those salaries of these high paying jobs, it's easy to be like, okay, I'm pivoting my whole career into this area. There's so much demand for it. The market right now in general isn't that great. So when you see this tech being so in demand, you naturally want to jump on and be part of the bandwagon. The first thing you really need to keep in mind before you start diving into learning a new technology is how long has this been around for? Now this doesn't always work per se, but when you start and think about say something like AI that's been around for so, so many decades, so many years, you realize that this isn't something new that's trending in the sense of 
this tech isn't going to work. It's more so you know it's stable, you know it's going to be around for a very long time. That is a really good sign. Just like with AI, you saw it was kind of, you know, steady, and then all of a sudden with ChatGPT, everything really changed overnight. But the technology itself has been around for a long time. It's evolved very quickly as a recent, but it doesn't, it's not going to go anywhere, and we're very certain of that looking at its past. The best way to really make predictions about predictions, predictions, can't speak today, about the future is to look actually at our past and what has happened in the past. Now, with something like, say, cryptocurrency, to varying degrees, this was around for a while, but not nearly as long as AI. And in turn, that might have been something that was a sign as to, okay, let's just see how this plays out longer versus jumping right into becoming the next blockchain developer, which is still great, by the way. Now, when you look ahead, though, at these trending technologies, does it mean they're going to stay as in demand as they are today? No, that we can't fully predict. What we can predict, though, is based on the number of job openings that are opening up for these roles, where the technology is headed. I mean, with something like, I know I keep on referring to AI, but I think it's a really good example with AI. It's threaded throughout our entire ecosystem in all businesses, in our daily lives. So you know it's a safe bet if you are interested in that. And that brings me to my second point, which is if you are interested in that. Why I really emphasize that is because tech, as we've seen, will come and go with different trends. No one trend will remain. AI is really hot today. There will be something else that is hot tomorrow. It is not going to remain AI. And if you are jumping into tech trends and learning about tech trends, whether it's say, uh, becoming a machine learning engineer or on the business side of AI, you actually need to enjoy learning about this because it's very, very complex and it's very niche and specific. And if you are not actually invested in your career going down that path, you are setting yourself up for failure because you're quickly learning about it to get ahead, but then when something else comes, you're shifting your career that way. Now this brings me to my third tip, which is evaluate your current skill set. And I think this is so important because if you are more junior or just starting out your career, it is a bigger risk or bigger jump the more new technologies that you are diving into. If you, it is taking you away from learning and really mastering the fundamentals of whether it be programming or if you're on the business side, the theoretical side of these technologies. And this is because when you have been developing for a long time or working in the tech industry for a long time, it's easy easier to quickly gain a sense of these trending technologies, maybe even pivot your career. But if you are just starting out and you're putting all of your eggs into that basket, it does feel more permanent, more of a bigger impact than if you have this long resume to go off of uh, prior to jumping into the trending technology. So my biggest takeaway or biggest piece of advice for someone who's just starting out their career is actually to not do any, do not focus on learning any trending technology unless you have really mastered the fundamentals of uh, tech as a whole. And it's kind of vague, but if you are on the developer side, understanding all the basics of the development that you are learning, if you are on the design side, same kind of thing. And the next one I really need to bring up is you need to network and ask people. And what I mean by this is for me, when I really started asking people as to their thoughts on these technologies, you know, I'll give you the example. I am currently studying uh, AI and machine learning in a post-grad and I, before just taking that course, jumping into it, I had many calls with the school actually. I had calls with people who took that course. I've seen where they're at now. Like I did my research and that really helped me as to knowing, is this worth my time to be learning these new things, in this case, AI and ML? Or is it going to be, you know, am I getting sucked into what's trending at this moment? Once you have uncovered, you know, if it's worth you learning these new technologies that are trending, the next topic or next big bucket is this, which is, well, how do you learn them very efficiently? One of the biggest things for me when I am learning something new, and I have to do so at a very quick or rapid pace, is the following. I will always start by going back to the documentation, which is the worst, it's the most boring, I know, but if it's a new thing, either technical or soft skill, reading about it, understanding how this really works. From there, I love taking a tutorial, and I think tutorials, get a bad rap, especially as of late. You know, we always talk about tutorial hell, getting stuck in that continuous cycle of leaning on tutorials to learn one thing after another. But in reality, tutor tutor tutorials can actually be a really good thing. And you just need to know or identify once you hit that point where it's maybe, you know, you've done enough tutorials. For me, I like to set that at two. 
if it's a longer one on say Udemy, then maybe it's one even. But having that bandwidth up, you know, having a tutorial is great. It's almost like you're taking a class. You need to digest this information. And to do so, a tutorial that really breaks things out is a great way to go. From there, I honestly still like to join online communities. If I'm learning something new, in my case about AI and ML, for me, that was a community through Slack that was uh, taken in that course. But if it's, or not Slack, sorry, but that the portal in that course. But if you are someone who's taking kind of an independent tutorial, honestly, Googling or searching up different kind of uh, Slack channels to be part of or groups to be part of as you're learning makes such a difference. And more often than not, you will meet either other people to network with or have these great conversations with and you never know where they're working. It might lead to a thing or two. Okay, this one might be kind of strange to some of you, but if you do it, I promise you it makes a big difference, which is I will actually, when I am ramping up learning something new, especially a technology that is trending, but I'm like, this is worth me investing my time and resources, energy, all of that into. I will also ramp up on my time on spending time on social media and also to newsletters. Now, here's the, the but with the social media. For social media, I'm already very particular as to who, not only who I follow, but who is not muted. So, you know, you have to sometimes follow people who, for, you know, your, your mom or your friend or something like that, where you're like, yeah, I don't really wanna see your content. Just mute them and really curate your feed to be specific as to what you are focused on learning. I love to follow people who are educating others, putting, uh, you know, real world examples out there, helping other people, because for me, I can either learn something quickly or there's some value in me spent on my time in social media in that moment. So what I will do as I'm learning a new technology, ramp up time on social media actually, because I've curated it so good to be more educational content. And then on the newsletter side, I love new newsletters. My favorite one right now still is TLDR, Too Long Didn't Read. They have one specifically for AI and then they also have one for web development and both are really great. They keep you up to date as to trending topics, what's coming up really quickly, and also to kind of summarizes everything. Now the last way when learning something quickly is through the use of AI. One of my favorite ways to learn new things is actually having conversations with ChatGPT. And this is interesting because today, as I am making this, they just announced, as I mentioned earlier, their new model. Was it a new model? I think it was a new model. Let me see. Yeah, new model. And one of the things it's going to be able to do is have these really human-like conversations with you where they are able to, uh, you know, study with you at a different level and just make you feel as though it's your own personal tutor. I think this will really help ramp up learning and take it to the next level. Now, until we can start playing around with that one though, even using the existing ChatGPT models to, or sorry, OpenAI models for ChatGPT to have conversations with, I find so helpful. It's almost like this throughout the day, if I have an idea I need to bounce off of someone or if I'm wanting to explain something, because I think that's how it works technically, but I'm not sure, I'll just talk to ChatGPT. It's honestly a game changer and I think it really helps me stay ahead because the more you're able to communicate out these technical topics that you are focused on learning, the more it reinforces your learning. So it's a win-win. All right, those are my tips when I'm looking to understand, is this trending tech worth learning? Is it worth diving into? Or is it something that will just pass? The other thing is then once you identify this trending tech that you're interested in, I wanted to share as I did some tips to help you learn faster. I mean, we are all so busy. The older we get, the more busy we get, the less time we have, it's kind of stressful, but we got this. And then the number one thing is through this community. Leave in the comments what you are currently focused on learning, where you see your career going, or even any other questions you have for me. Make sure to hit that subscribe button and I will see you all soon. Thanks everyone.